So I want to start off by thanking everybody for attending tonight. Um, I know it's, imp it's important that everybody is involved with our community, and we want to thank you for participating in this process. My name is Adrian Engel. I'm a project manager with AIM Consulting, um, a public outreach firm contracted by the city um, to start facilitating a discussion about this, the Nishi Gateway um, plan area. And so we have a couple things to do tonight. First, we'll have a, some few presentations given by city, city staff, um, some representatives from UC Davis, and then um, some staff from the, working with the developer. And then we have some boards and stations in the back that we're going to ask for some comments on. And so tonight, um, tonight we're focusing on a couple different things. But to get started with some housekeeping, the restrooms, if anybody doesn't know, are outside the door to the left. Um, and so the outreach process is being divided into two nights, tonight and tomorrow night. <laughs> Tonight's focus is going to be an overview of the project, and then we're going to focus on issues of community space and mobility. And tomorrow night, we'll be looking more towards information about um, economic development and housing. If you can't make the presentation tomorrow night and have some comments to give about economic development housing, we're more than happy to take that information as well. I also want to stress that everything that you're going to see here tonight is at the super preliminary stages, and we're just starting to solicit ideas at this point to move this process forward and really start talking about um, the plan that's in this area. So at this point, I want to introduce the, the teammates who are around the room. First, Mike Webb here up front is the community or the city's community development director. Catherine Hess in the back, the city's project manager. Tim Ruff is here. He's the property owner for the Nishi property. Bob Seeger is also here on the right uh, from UC Davis. Dan Paro in the back, the deputy to Supervisor Saylor. And then Prakash Pinto is here in the front. He works with Pinto and Partners as part of the consultant team. So um, with that, I want to make sure everybody's aware there's comment cards. We'd really like to get as many comments in writing as we can. We're going to be working on responding to all those and putting them on the website. In a couple weeks, we're also going to be putting an online survey up as well to be able to solicit, solicit information that way. On that comment card is also the website, which is www.nishigateway.org. So check back there for more information as well. So with that, I'd like to introduce um, Mike Webb to talk a little bit about the project. Thanks, Adrian. This one here? All right. All right. And you won't hear my voice amplified because this is just for the video recording purposes. So um, if you're wondering, why is this guy holding a microphone? Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you very much, Adrian. Um, really, again, appreciate everyone taking some time out of your, out of your valuable evenings and family time to come here and, and uh, join with us tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll see some of you tomorrow evening as well. Um, one of the things that I'll add to Adrian's comments is that, again, uh, reiterating that this is, uh, this is kind of the, the very first, you know, one of the very first opportunities for us to get out, uh, start engaging with uh, the community uh, on, this, uh, on this effort. And it won't be the last uh, opportunity by any stretch. Uh, there will be uh, multiple uh, places along the way where we'll, we will be uh, seeking to engage with the community uh, on the effort. Uh, including the website development that Adrian uh, mentioned, which will uh, ultimately have some tools that will allow folks to uh, to engage and provide input uh, from the comfort of their homes or or place of work on break, of course. Uh, and uh, so, th thank you again for for coming out. Uh, so, the property the properties that we're talking about uh, tonight uh, is uh, in particular. Uh, uh, really contains uh, both city land that uh, is within the uh, unincorporated area of Yolo County, and that's uh, referred to here in blue as the Nishi site. Uh, that's about approximately 44 acres, again, immediately adjacent to the city, uh, uh, adjacent to the downtown and the UC Davis uh, campus. Uh, any development on this property, as many may already know, would require a Measure J, now called Measure R, uh, <coughs> citizens vote because it would be a uh, conversion of what is currently designated uh, a land that's not 
doesn't have an urban designation in the general plan to an urban designation. So that requires or triggers a, uh, a voter uh, approval process. A little bit of the history of, of some of the, uh, the evaluations and, and looks at this property in the past. In uh, 2008, the city of Davis uh, convened a, what we refer to as a housing element steering committee. Uh, and that was a 2008 effort uh, to evaluate a number of different properties and sites uh, for potential housing opportunities uh, throughout the city. This site, the Nishi property in particular, was looked at as, as one of those opportunity sites. Uh, and the steering committee uh, had a recommended uh, range of housing going anywhere from 460 on up to 1,000 units, uh, evaluated as part of that process uh, at potential access points uh, uh, to uh, campus uh, from Olive Drive, uh, and ultimately came to a, uh, a recommendation to uh, suggest working cooperatively with the campus to develop uh, potential concepts uh, for the property. Another effort that was underway, so that the 2008 uh, steering committee was focused primarily on housing. Uh, uh, in a, just a, a little bit of time after that, in 2010, the city d uh, convened what we refer to as the business park, um, the business park uh, land strategy effort, and that was what we called the Innovation Park Task Force, uh, which was convened at the time uh, to look at um, opportunities for economic development job growth, uh, business growth opportunities, places where uh, local companies and spin-offs from the university could uh, house their businesses uh, over time. Uh, in particular, they were looking at both peripheral sites, uh, sites that uh, you know, would currently be outside the city limits um, and more on the, more on the edges. Um, uh, and then also at the same time, looking at uh, opportunity sites closer into the city, including the Nishi property and the downtown in general, uh, as opportunity sites for uh, that non-residential growth. So the, uh, one of the keys to that effort is that the recommendations coming out of this business park land strategy, and recommendations coming to the city council and adopted by the city council, is that any economic development efforts that the city makes moving forward really need to be multifaceted. Uh, no one solution is going to, um, uh, to meet all the needs uh, for economic development. And so looking at multiple opportunities uh, simultaneously. Um, one of the uh, key elements of that effort also was uh, the a recommendation to pursue the downtown and the Nishi Gateway District in particular uh, as a dynamic mixed use uh, innovation district and with a mixture of both economic development, job growth, and housing. Uh, and again, collaboration with UC Davis is seen as a, a real opportunity uh, to some of the uh, solutions and, and, and challenges that a site like this presents. And then lastly, to look at the Richards Olive Drive uh, area, which I'm sure everyone knows quite well, uh, as a uh, really kind of revisioning that as an entry, key entry into the, into the community uh, and certainly as one of the uh, opportunity points uh, for uh, transportation and mobility. So again, moving forward with some of the past efforts of the city, particular to this site, in 2012, the city council adopted uh, goals uh, as part of their their kind of every, every two year goal setting process. A couple of those that pertain to this effort were to actively partner with UC Davis, our partners, the uh, Yolo County as well, uh, on land use planning and economic development efforts, and to more specifically seek to entitle the Downtown University Mixed Use Innovation District, which is the site and area that we're talking about tonight. So the efforts that have been underway the last, uh, the last several months um, and to kind of bring us, uh, bring us current and where we are, where we are today. Uh, the city of uh, Davis, the property owner uh, of the Nishi property, Yolo County, UC Davis, and even LAFCO, which is our local agency formation commission, um, have all been partnering uh, and working collaboratively to develop 
uh, frameworks uh, and concepts for potential development on, the NICI, on, on this uh, site. Um, the goals of, of that collaborative effort and of that uh, collective group uh, really refer to uh, key issues I think that we can all uh, pretty readily relate to around sustainability, walkability, you know, really looking at the site as an opportunity with its close proximity, immediate proximity to the university, the downtown, um, to uh, transit networks, to Amtrak, um, uh, supporting campus initiatives and, and uh, efforts that the campus has underway. Um, but moreover, a place, creating a place for living and innovation uh, to occur in the same, in the same environment. Uh, community engagement, certainly, you know, reaching out to the community, having it be a collaborative uh, planning process. And then lastly, but not least, uh, addressing traffic. And again, as I said, some of the uh, key opportunity areas that the site presents. So that those were the goals of the, of the broader collective group. Um, some more specific city council goals that were established uh, by the council for this, for this site are uh, jobs, job creation for the community, high density urban housing, uh, improving that front door, that entry to the community, um, supporting downtown Davis. Uh, how can additional jobs, housing uh, actually help facilitate and promote uh, the livelihood, the uh, uh, vibrancy of our existing downtown and support those businesses that we have today. And then revenue generation. So tonight, some of the issues, key issues that we really want to engage with all of you on uh, and in an interactive way once we get through this initial presentation are questions like what aspects of these frameworks, which we'll introduce in a moment, uh, are consistent with the city's goals uh, for the district that we've just described? How can they be improved? Um, and then how can the project uh, on this property be uh, one that would receive Measure J, Measure R uh, approval, knowing that that's you know a, a, a pretty good sized hurdle to overcome um, and, to, and to work through with the community. Uh, it really is a collaborative effort, we think, uh, to uh, engage with the community in a way that results in uh, a plan and in a framework that ultimately would be hopefully not only accepted by the voters, but embraced by the voters. So feasibility studies, um, there's a number of uh, analyses and uh, 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 evaluations that we uh, have uh, that, that need to be done and need to be undertaken with this site. Uh, water wastewater plans, transportation vehicle reduction plans and efforts, uh, economic analysis, uh, and economic analysis not only in the sense of the microeconomics of this particular property, but what are the economic uh, uh, impacts, potential economic benefits uh, to the community at large of a project like this? Um, for those efforts, uh, we, the city, and with our partners, uh, UC Davis, the county, property owner, have uh, submitted for a couple of different grant applications. Uh, and uh, it's looking very good in terms of one of the grant applications that we've applied for that um, that would help to f significantly help to fund a lot of these analyses that we would, that we would need moving forward. So next steps, timeline. So the, uh, in the fall of this year, we would anticipate uh, undertaking those environmental and feasibility analyses, uh, then going back before the city council uh, to select uh, a, what we call a preferred project. Um, and one, you know, of the different frameworks and different, you know, possibilities, you know, kind of narrowing the focus down to one preferred framework. Uh, and with that, initiating, with that direction from city council, then initiating uh, environmental review in the form of CEQA, uh, which is California Environmental Quality Act, um, that many of you are probably familiar with, uh, would necessitate preparation of an, what we call an EIR, Environmental Impact Report. Uh, as I mentioned, those, in, those economic and uh, environmental analyses uh, being completed in 2015, and then uh, measure our vote uh, looking at November 2015 for that. 
So that's the end of my introductory comments. From here, I'd like to introduce uh, Bob Seeger, who's the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Campus Planning. And he'll... Uh, Thanks, Mike. It is weird to have this not be amplified, but <laughs> I'll keep it up here. So um, just wanted to give a few comments from the campus perspective about um, this whole collaborative planning effort. Um, and I'll say a little bit about the, the growth that's pending at the campus, too, that's driving some of our interest and participation in this, in this whole thing. So um, as, you've, as you may have heard, I think it's my next slide, uh, the campus is projecting um, some pretty significant enrollment growth in the coming years. We haven't really started on that trajectory yet, but it's, but it's coming. And these are the round numbers. These aren't, don't quote me on these, but these are the round numbers that are getting talked about um, as a strategy to grow the campus, internationalize the campus, and as a way to try to preserve access for California students, um, to grow by, by that kind of number, and then add the associated faculty and staff growth that, that comes with that. So participating in this planning study for this part of campus with the city and the landowner in the county is a planning study that will help inform our own long-range development plan. So long-range development plans are the closest things that campus campuses have, UC campuses, to a city general plan. They're sort of our equivalent. So we'll look out 10, 15, 20 years, do a big comprehensive long-range development plan like a general plan, look at all the population growth, all the land use and facilities growth that it might take to grow the campus, and then do a big environmental, programmatic environmental impact report on that. So we'll be starting that in the coming months, and this study for this part of campus uh, collaboratively with the city will help inform that. And we talked about that one. So when the campus grows, um, there are these kinds of activities that we need to plan for. So this is kind of our vocabulary here, so clearly, there's the whole academic enterprise. That's why people come, right? So that means we'll be looking at new classrooms, new labs and office buildings for faculty and for staff um, to supply that education to that expanded um, number of students. But as you know, um, it's not just labs and offices and classrooms. It's a full-fledged community in its own right. So we have student housing. We have athletics and recreation programs, all kinds of student services programs. When the campus grows in numbers in students, those things grow too, so we'll be planning for expansion and all those. And then, of course, all the sustainability strategies for both involving people and making the place, um, talking about that balance between housing and transportation. Um, if we grow and we provide significant amount of housing, that cuts down on the in commute, but it has other potential um, impacts and implications close in. Um, and then the systems of uh, energy, water, um, that we work so hard on to try to really create a sustainable future for the campus. So we're going to be looking at all of those um, needs as we look at growth. This is the existing campus long-range development plan. So to get you oriented, uh, there's downtown. Um, there's the quad. In, it's kind of an ugly green, but in this map, but that's right there. Uh, Russell Boulevard up at the top, and there's the Nishi property right there. So, you know, in, in our vocabulary, um, that's the academic core of campus. That's what you around the quad and that's where most of the classrooms and and offices and labs are The campus is is 3,700 acres on this drawing the inside the freeways uh, Interstate 80 and 113 is about 900 acres um, And as most of you know, it's, it's by far the largest of the UC campuses um, That's housing so you can kind of see I mean in a way that's that's our downtown right next to downtown Davis and I mean, campus planning 101, everything else wants to get as close as possible. So that's our housing. The green is athletics and recreation. The brown are the, some of the facilities and operations that it takes to run the place. So really, you know, fueling that academic core with people and activity and systems. And that's uh, the existing Solano Park housing in this corner of campus that we're talking about close to downtown and the Nishi property. Um, so you'll see this slide a couple times, but um, we were calling it East Village just for fun. Um, but this is the campus part uh, that's in the planning study. And, and as you know, one of the big issues on this property the whole time has been access, not overburdening the Richards Boulevard um, access to this part of Davis by, and you'll see in these studies, what we're looking at is um, vehicle access to the campus. So we're looking at 
bike and pedestrian access. We're looking at vehicle access. We're looking at open space connections. That's a lot of what you'll hear Prakash talk about as we put these different scenarios forward. And when we talk about a framework, you'll see drawings that look like, oh, it's all done and figured out because it shows buildings. It's, they're really there to spark conversation and to talk about, well, how, if we're to, to really try to do coordinated planning, how should we connect um, across the boundaries that separate the campus and this other property? Um, so just a little, this is a campus person's view of the world, so forgive me. Um, Interstate 80, going by, there's the tracks. Um, I'll just take you a walk through some of the projects that have really, most of what you see on this drawing has been done in the last 10 years. Um, there's the Arboretum that, um, so here's the track. So there's the east end where that new garden, I see Emily's here. The new garden that just opened down by Davis Commons with the shovel sculptures right down here. The Arboretum snakes all the way to the west end of campus like that. Um, right off the map, on the left, off the drawing, is um, School of Education and the Fine Arts Complex. So there's, that's where the music department, theater and dance department, studio art, the main theater that seats 500 people, and we're building a new recital hall for the music department that is gonna seat almost 400 people. So part of what you'll see me building up here is that this planning area that's campus right here and the, the, the uh, Davis Nishi Gateway right here is, is unique in our community for how close and walkable it is. You'll hear the city folks talk about how close and walkable it is to feeding downtown, but it's also close and walkable to the core campus up here and to this whole new um, visitor and cultural district that the campus has built down here. So it's, it's really uniquely positioned in that regard. Um, that's Solano Park Student Housing. I'm gonna say more about that. Uh, the Mondavi Center for Performing Arts is there. Graduate School of Management is right there. The Conference Center Hotel and Welcome Center for UC Davis is all in that area. That's the site for the new Museum of Art that's gonna break ground this summer. Uh, and that's the Mondavi Institute for Wine and Food Science, which keeps expanding with new programs and the vineyard at the entry to campus. So, um, you know, for us, all these investments and new programs that have been built are about bringing the campus out front, making it visible, inviting people in to have a great experience at UC Davis and learning more about the place, but also then great new facilities for, for these campus activities. Um, and that's the planning area on the campus side um, that encompasses Solano Park, that encompasses existing environmental horticulture department, encompasses some open land and some recreation land, um, some parking areas. So it's a lot of it's developed uh, and would be redevelopment over the long haul, and some of it is, is, is undeveloped at this time. So again, what we're working on is this framework for connections. The rate at which some of these uses might change or develop is really not something that we can even predict right now. We're just trying to get this framework that would help us um, plan collaboratively. So a little bit about um, forecasting what you're gonna see from Prakash in terms of the circulation. I mentioned access. So this is the existing route of Old Davis Road now. Uh, it used to be, for those of you who remember, it used to go all the way up here along the edge of the Arboretum. Uh, and little by little, it's bumped. In fact, it used to come in just like this, and it went right here, there was an intersection cut up like that, and it went, I'll show you how long I've been here. It, go, it went up like that over to A Street and up. Well. We just built this roundabout, and when we built the Mondavi Center, we extended it uh, this far. When we built the hotel, we extended it that far, and we just extended it the rest of the way. And if you've been over there, you see what it does is it takes Old Davis Road, old, old Davis Road, and turns it into a bike path along the top of the Arboretum. And the long-term plan for the Arboretum is that we want to get a bikeway up in the top of the bank and have the paths that are down below be just for pedestrians. So that's the roadway extension as it exists. And what you're gonna see from Prakash is, um, you know, he's gonna describe these comprehensive kind of what if scenarios that describe what might ha what could happen on the campus side, what could happen on the Davis Nishi Gateway side, and what might connections look like. Um, so a couple of his alternatives that you'll see, um, alternatives one and two, um, would have that kind of connection, and that would mean redeveloping at least a chunk of Solano Park, and I'm gonna say, again, there's, that's um, what we worked on together. Um, another one of his alternatives, three, would be a different way of connecting. This, I'm just showing roadway connections, but he'll show you both roadway and bike path and pedestrian and open space connections across one side to the other. Um, so his alternative three looks like that from a campus perspective, and then, we're in conversations with our, our student family community and our graduate student housing community 
and we want to make sure that and that's a concurrent planning process with this so we want to make sure we look at some alternatives that keep the current configuration of Solano Park as is so it's not reflected in Prakash's diagrams yet but we'll be looking at additional connections as well that would allow that to happen and that's kind of the way we've described the process we we put forward these framework connections we kind of go back to our own environments look at the possibilities and come back together and turn the crank and try it again um, so we'll talk this is more like the drawings that Prakash will show but what they're what they're really about at this point the potential for road and path and, and pedestrian connections, the potential for open space connections, and then what might we each look at in terms of future long-term development on both sides. Um, so from a campus perspective, it's really exciting to be a part of this collaboration, um, this kind of newly invigorated and, and shared interest in economic development from the campus side and from the city side, sharing that interest in sustainable transportation, um, looking at at development strategies that would benefit both downtown and the university, um, something that will co be coordinated with our long-range development plan, and that we can coordinate with the future vision for uh, Solano Park and Orchard Park on the other side of campus. So what happens next? This process that we're in right now, um, which the city is running in terms of a public outreach, um, the shared analysis that Mike mentioned of traffic and, and other implications of potential scenarios, we'll go back and do programming for our long-range development plan with these different frameworks in mind, what might we do on the campus that could coordinate with, with these patterns, and then just keep you know, taking it a step at a time. The, at this point, the collaboration really is the most exciting thing, that we're talking about it together, we're looking at scenarios together, we're each kind of respecting what each party needs to go back and make it work for themselves, and then coming back together again, um, and uh, seeking a long-term vision uh, where each move can support a, a bigger idea. So that's all I brought, and I want to hand it over to Prakash, um, who guided us through um, a planning process, really to get to this point where we could pose um, scenarios for, for conversation. Okay, thank you, uh, Bob. And uh, thank you for being here. My name is uh, Prakash Pinto. I was a uh, principal in charge at Perkins & Will. I'm now a uh, partner with Pinto & Partners. Uh, based in Berkeley, uh, where I teach, and I, I do have an affinity for Davis. Uh, I just want to just briefly tell you my involvement started with my niece, who actually was a student here. She's graduate, she's um, already graduated, but she said, you do all these great planning projects for these big universities, why can't you come to Davis and, and do something for us as students, because we want to stay in town. We want to work in this wonderful city, and I know this city quite well. And it's, it's wonderful, it's got a world-class university. And, and so that was my involvement. And so uh, I wanna show you some of the planning that we've all done together to hopefully bring forward a vision that really fulfills this really wonderful potential that exists in this, uh, in this city. With that, I, I wanna talk about some precedents uh, to help put this in some context. Um, uh, I, uh, my office, my former office and I, we worked on Mission Bay with UCSF um, in San Francisco. Um, and this has been 18 years of work, uh, but it's actually evolving now. And it's, it's getting built, it's about 75% built. And this is a true innovation center. It's got the university hospital, it's got really wonderful companies, it's got incubator spaces, it's got living spaces. It's got great open spaces, and it's a new neighborhood in the city. And I think that's what we're really talking about here in terms of innovation districts, that these are not just employment centers. These are not just housing centers. These are real neighborhoods and districts within cities. Uh, and you can see the master plan. It's really uh, a wonderful kind of very walkable. It's got retail. It's got great open spaces, access to the waterfront. Uh, families live here. Students live here. Faculty live here. Young professionals. Um, and, it, and it's truly become a very desirable place in the city to live now. Another project that I, I it's still ongoing. It's with Johns Hopkins. And they, uh, they, uh, they're looking at this part of Baltimore that's really needs revitalization, but they, are, they have a great need for research and incubation spaces, and so they asked us to come in and look at a kind of mixed-use neighborhood. And uh, we came in with an idea about open spaces and, and, and new kinds of 
office spaces, new kinds of living spaces. And you can see it's built now. It's got a real vibrant, it's got daycare, it's got preschools. It, it really is a community. And I think that's really the difference between what we're talking about innovation <coughs> district. That's really truly a neighborhood versus just a business park, which is not what we're talking about here. And currently, um, uh, and formerly I was working uh, in Fremont with uh, it, as cities start to look at this, uh, this is adjacent to the Tesla plant and looking at how spin-off technologies can actually be housed. And because it's equidistant between Stanford and Berkeley, it's actually a very strategic location for researchers. And it's actually Livermore uh, la labs are also kind of, it's right at the, at the juncture of these three uh, fantastic institutions. And so it's true an innovation center for great minds to come to work and to live and uh, to be a real place uh, and destination. These are just some of the renderings. It's still undergoing an EIR process, but you can see it, it, it's, they're, not, um, they're not places that close down at, at 5 p.m. So what are the qualities? It, a high de degree of collaboration between the university and the city. There's density, housing density and choices, accessibility to various modes of transportation, there's employment and housing adjacencies, so jobs housing are balanced in a, in a very close proximity. Um, there's mix of uses, a real focus on local retail and amenities because th they are about the neighborhoods. Um, creating diversity of open spaces. And one thing I want to really want to emphasize is that none of those projects could be done without strong public input and process. The communities that these projects in are very vocal communities, very passionate about where they live, and Davis is no different than that. And I think um, this process is very similar to that to solicit your input to how to make this project really wonderful. Uh, just contact and site analysis. Uh, Bob showed you the site. Uh, um, I just want to make sure. So you can see it, it's at a very important juncture. Here's the university, here's downtown. And it's really at the front door of, of Davis. A closer view uh, for you. And one thing that's truly also a wonderful is the Arboretum here, as Bob was mentioning, as a, as a way to integrate. And you'll see this in the planning uh, options that we are showing. This uh, slide already, uh, the UC side and, and the Nishi property side, and then Olive Drive, which is a currently mixed use area. There are many opportunities. It's highly strategic. Uh, a high, high, it's a strategic site adjacent to UC in downtown. Uh, it's intended to be a mixed-use district that services both, but also utilizes both. It's very desirable location. Uh, very desirable location for employment, and we really want to take advantage of the existing amenities, not only those of the downtown, but also the ones Bob mentioned in his presentation. There's the Mondavi Center, the Shrem Art Center coming in. Many really fantastic uh, amenities are in that location. And really take advantage of Davis as a knowledge center in the entire Central Valley. This is, this is where you're bringing really wonderful, talented people are gravitating here. And so how do you capture them? How do you actually allow them to do the kind of work that they want to do? There are issues, though. Uh, there's a railroad that runs through the site and how we cross it is important, how we create that connection. Uh, we need to emphasize transit and bike pads versus automobile and parking. And that will be a theme tonight. We want to solicit input as well from you. Uh, ease uh, easements and setbacks from the highway and from the railroad, so the site uh, utilization also is an issue. And then how we phase uh, infrastructure. It's going to be expensive to build these crossings. And that's something we're, we're looking for in the planning. I want to talk about just collaboration and how we got to these three because there's a lot of work. And I have to say, this group was probably the most collaborative group I've ever worked with, from the university to the city to the county uh, to the landowners. Very collaborative. We, we actually ha had 10 concepts at one point where we were looking at them. We've narrowed them down to three for you to comment on. Um, but it was really a, a wonderful effort. And, and, and uh, I think some fantastic ideas came forward. So getting to the alternatives, um, there are many common goals uh, to strengthen campus connections uh, and community connections, create a new gateway to Davis. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be brief because I think um, my time is limited here. Uh, we want to achieve synergy with all the existing and recreational assets that are in the area already and achieve a synergy with downtown Davis, really utilize that wonderful walkable downtown that we have here. 
uh, and take advantage of the location to create a pedestrian-oriented community. Uh, and also create a new mixed-use district that's really truly viable, that meets the growing needs, as Bob mentioned, of a growing university that's growing leaps and bounds, and also where, to understand how we bring employment into the city as well. Design themes, I won't go through every one, but they're really about using accessibility and open space, connectivity, reduce automobile dependency, creating walkable streets. These are things that, as a community, you already know all these things about. I see it in the way the streets are designed, the way you have bike paths everywhere, the way you really focus on the pedestrian. You, you understand sustainability as a community. These are all things we want to leverage and, and build into this project. And, and these are just more, um, bringing really uh, more compact development, a diversity of housing types, high performance, sustainable, net zero buildings if possible, how we look at stormwater and solar gardens and roofs, really truly integrate a kind of sustainable uh, program into this, into this community. These are the three alternatives. We just loosely call them to help us identify courtyards, green fingers and green loops. And really what we're looking at is the program in all of these are essentially the same. But what we've done is we've organized them slightly differently based on how we've organized open space, um, where we've put some housing locations. And I just want to mention, you know, we show things on the UC side, but as Bob mentioned, th this is very preliminary in its planning and we allow this as a framework. We're really focusing more on connections, uh, how we actually integrate these two um, sides of the tracks in a more holistic manner and knowing that the university is moving forward on their planning effort as they start to look at their own uh, LRDP and their growth but looking at the whole site as one integrated site at least for the sake of planning purposes is very helpful. This is the total program and there's charts so don't don't worry if you can't read it here uh, but we're looking at about 1600 to 1700 jobs potentially in this area with about 1,200 housing units, roughly. I mean, these are numbers that we're still looking at and, and still testing. And if you have comments about that, that's uh, really important. But we really, really would like to see a significant amount of housing and jobs balanced in this area. Uh, I don't want to forget open space. There's a significant amount of open space and, and arts and culture that we want to build on what the campus is doing, but also provide that on, on, on these sites. So the first alternative really looks at creating a series of different open spaces. This is the railroad tracks and this is 80 here. Um, and uh, more clearly is the land use and the blue is more office uh, R&D and the yellow is more housing. And this really looks at putting more housing closer to the downtown and along the Arboretum and, and more of the office R&D and, and incubator spaces away from that. Uh, looking at how we can use those kinds of buildings as buffers to the highway um, so that we're, we're protecting more of the residential. And this is a way we, we could lay out one option is just looking at different kinds of open spaces that would actually house a variety of different activities. We want to have some access parking but that would be treated like a solar farm and, and uh, understand that we would really want to understand how housing could actually be more organized and made more accessible to the downtown. This is just highlights the different types of open spaces and, and these are on the boards and one of the questions we have for you is, is the idea about the diversity of these open spaces, what kind of programs and, and different concepts for them. These are the, this is the major street network, as Bob was talking about, um, how, how we could organize the site. And this is the one connection uh, separated crossing under the tracks that we would be uh, looking at in this option. A very highly um, robust uh, bike and pedestrian network uh, to really link this part and, uh, of the site with this part and actually really look at connections to south of Davis so that we are really filling in this gap. Second alternative, what we call green fingers, is just a different orientation, a more idea of open space and commons and linking it with the existing arboretum, which is really a wonderful place uh, that, that already exists as, a, as an amenity, uh, organizing buildings along it and creating smaller semi-public courtyards uh, for the housing. 
and this is how it generally lo looks. You can see we're, we're looking at more housing that's really closer to the downtown and, and would be more accessible. A lot of the incubator R&D space, office space uh, away from that. And arts, uh, looking at the, the campus is, is sort of moved towards putting more of their arts and, and culture in this area and we're really, really looking to emphasize that in some ways. Uh, this is just a, a, a 3D view. Again, you can see the major open spaces. The, the, ac the grade separation is right here connected. Um, again, you know, this area, depending on how the university decides to move forward, could be adjusted and modified. We could certainly adjust that and modify that to fit the planning needs of the university. This is the open space, so this is the Arboretum, and we're really looking at how we can connect that. And the street network as seen in the orange, I, I meant to say in the previous slides, were, would be a secondary road network. So you'd, you'd have really what these blocks are designed to be very walkable, not long expanses, but really more like the downtown. There's a nice scale to the downtown and to your neighborhoods here. Keep that pattern of, of development. Again, a, a very robust bike and ped network with lots of connections out uh, to the surrounding. The third alternative, and Bob uh, showed this earlier, would be uh, what we're calling a green loop. And we're actually looking at open space that could really tie everything together as a kind of loop uh, with the existing arboretum. Same kind of program. We're talking about the exact same amount of program, same kind of planning strategy. But I this is very interesting in that it takes advantage of a, a kind of grid that the university established in the city in this direction and follows through with it and just slightly turns it for the connection here. And so you, you can see how the loop came uh, through with this. Um, uh, th again, I just want to point out the railroad track if it's not clear to people where that is. And this would be the uh, crossing uh, between the two sites. And the open space network. Uh, so again, that loop as, we were, as I was mentioning earlier. And the road network. We're trying to, you know, be judicious with roads. Uh, we really want to focus on pedestrians and, 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 and their movement. This is the bike and ped. And so these are the three uh, different options. You can see there's a lot, some similarities, but a, some differences we'd like you to comment on. And this is just a rendering of, of in terms of uh, some of the potential layouts of open spaces mixed with higher density housing and ground floor retail and activity, um, really kind of DNA of, of and character of, of, of this place. Now, I just want to just take a few minutes um, uh, just for the questions. And I, I want to just talk about the qualities of good urban infill because we're going to ask you some questions about this, about what it entails, about diversity of housing choices and density, uh, creating a diversity of open spaces, both active and passive, uh, mobility options and choices. Uh, employment and housing adjacencies and mix of uses in local retail. These are things that really are not only what make a good innovation district, but also are good urban infill. But there's a lot of questions within these as we're moving forward on the planning that we need your input. Like what's the character? What's the level of scale? What's the density? I mean, these are things that are very valuable that you can provide to us to help us focus. And we have examples on the boards. So for example, you know, mobility and walkability, uh, there are many benefits to focusing on walkability and, and alternative modes of, of transportation. It, it creates more activity on sidewalks. It gives people more option rather than traveling by cars, uh, reduces greenhouse gases, and need, the need to not have to create parking lots and parking structures is, is really important. And I, th I think you're all aware of that. So some questions, for instance, are, are there other traffic management strategies we haven't thought of? You know, we, we're looking at, at how to use smart technology and, and all of those things, but I think you're a very smart community. You probably have some different ideas about how to actually move forward on that. We want to talk about also tonight open space and community character. And these are kinds of ideas that look towards what's good about uh, open spaces and, 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 and having a diversity. Uh, accommodating a range of use, uh, users, um, creating an urban situation, but also that have a uh, people have access to open spaces is very important. So there's a, a good balance between the two. And how green infrastructure can manage precious resources. I mean, manage stormwater, actually not use uh, uh, 
irrigation actually be drought tolerant. There's many ways that can sustain life and, 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 the, and the idea of, of open spaces. So one question for us is how do we apply Davis's community values in this context? You know, what, what does that mean? I, I'd be really curious uh, for your answers. Um, tomorrow we're talking about housing, but I just wanted, because I know some of you can't be here tomorrow, but um, you know, having higher density housing increases site utilization and um, reduces footprints actually. Uh, creates more activity on the streets, it allows people to live closer to employment centers and closer to work, and helps support the retail also. You have more people living in a, in a location. That's really Im important. So what types of housing should be included in the site? These are examples of current housing in Davis um, that are higher density housing. You have a precedent for it. And then finally, just um, uh, both um, Mike uh, mentioned this and, and, and Bob in, in some ways. But Davis does have a job deficit, um, and this is, uh, the council has reported on this. How do we leverage UC Davis and the Innovation Center for New Job Growth? That's the question, really. And then how do we provide well-paying jobs in Davis for Davis residents, you know, so that people like my niece don't graduate with this fantastic degree and then move to Sacramento, you know? Uh, she would, how, do they get, how do you get her back? I think that's the big question. Uh, what type of employers? And what type of businesses do you think? I, I, these are good questions, and we'd really like to um, get some input from you. Um, I think that's it. So I'll turn it over. Thank you very much. So we hope the presentation sparked many questions and ideas. And as Prakash has gone through sort of the framework for tonight, there's three stations around the room. There's one that talks about the individual frameworks here. Um, the far left corner talks more about the open space and community character. And then on the right side, um, in the back there, talks more about mobility and some of the, the uh, traffic management uh, potential ideas for there. So what we'd really like to get, get everybody involved with the room, staff will be around to answer questions, and be able to use the comment cards to get all your questions in writing. We'll be posting answers back for everybody to see on the website that I mentioned that's on the comment card, the nishigateway.org and also have the um, public participation survey coming up in the next couple weeks as well. So we have a little question and answer session or comment session so that we can share ideas with everyone else in the group? We'd really like to get them in writing so we can respond back to them that way instead of creating a dialogue. I, too. I, don't, I don't like this so do typical format where the uh, consultants come in yeah. and then yeah. break everyone up so nobody can say so anything the least bit controversial. You know, that, that's, other have I, I know the game, let's not play it. Okay, so, Catherine, do you want to take a limited number? I, part, part of what we want to make sure is that everybody has a chance to make comments. We promise to get you out at 8, but 15 or 20 minutes of, of Q&A, sure, if you've got questions. One request that I do have is, last time I was at a public meeting, the introduction was, please know Davis-style questions. That's one that starts with, given that, and goes for five minutes, and then might have a question at the end of it. And I think you all have seen those. Some of you have asked them, some of you have listened to them. And so, real questions we'd love. Wait a second, Catherine. Yeah. The center yeah. of the room was that people should be able to make comments as well, because we wanted to share our observations so, with the other citizens. Ah, That's okay. Another one yeah, the few that are here. So, so, so yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, we, we really do want to make sure that we give people an opportunity because there's additional information and details uh, and kind of uh, probing questions, if you will, um, along the exhibits in the back of the room. But why don't we take, um, if Adrian can perhaps facilitate, um, let's say 15 minutes of, of Q&A, and then, uh, then we can uh, then give the opportunity to, for people to break out into those, uh, uh, into the stations around the room. If you're not able to stay for uh, for the whole time do feel free to get up and, and start looking at those exhibits in the back if you're not able to stay the whole time so let's from we'll go from there oh, okay yeah all right so I, I'm just going to um, uh, make two comments uh, to my staff and my fellow citizens. Um, one observation, two observations. 
One is my concern that the, for the circulation, I, it's critical, of course, to have two complete means of egress, because anyone who's on this site is going to be trapped between f a railroad with fracking car, uh, trains filled with fracking oil, fracked oil, and, um, and, and, a big, and, and, and a big fence and the freeway. So it's like a death trap. Now my concern is that before we waste a lot of money on consultant things and stuff, <laughs> get the circulation. Um, and it seems to me that the way you have it uh, set up right now is that the the egress is too close to the middle, and it should be more towards the the end. I think you need you need a complete means of egress at either end. You don't want people even caught in the parking lot at that end without having an, a means of egress. You know that doesn't say say if there's an accident in the on the. Uh, between the in the middle of, of the Nishi, you know, or or if, or towards the Mandabi Center, it seems to me that that for safety's sake, you should move that access further towards the Mandabi Center. One observation. Okay. A second observation is I don't think it's a good idea to put retail on this site because we care. You know, you me you mentioned our, our downtown, our, our down the character of Davis and the things that are uniquely Davis, and what's uniquely Davis is that we have not spun out the way Berkeley has with a ton of different retail centers, and had our downtown suffer. And this is close enough to walk downtown, so I think that it's better not to have retail on this site. Maybe one coffee shop. I mean. Everybody can walk downtown or bike downtown from that site. It's only a couple of minutes. Um, so so I, maybe it's better to avoid the retail. So I've seen that not work in many places. Bethesda, Maryland split up retail. Yeah. Berkeley split up retail. Let me just uh, a respond to Thank that. I, I think that's a very good comment, and I, I didn't wasn't clear in the presentation. But we're, we're actually proposing very little retail. It's really just a cafe, maybe a dry cleaner, R really small, because we really want people to go to the downtown. It's really about accessibility. And as for, uh, I, I, I don't know, as to your first comment, we're still looking at all the circulation. This is very early on in the planning, and your concern is, is, is noted, definitely. So thanks. So just one, I mean, as, as we move forward, I mean, time is valuable here. Um, in terms of, of comments, uh, we would certainly like to get comments and feedback and suggestions. I'd really like to focus right now on, on some key questions. Uh, we've got about uh, 10, 10, 12 minutes left to focus on questions, so why don't we do that and then break out and give the opportunity for more, for more comments and suggestions and, and such as we move on. So. Okay, we'll start here and then go there. Okay, I'll, I'll put my comment in the form of a question. Um, Jeopardy move. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think it's really important to put anything like this when we're this early. We're really not going to focus on the community character, what jobs we're going to have there, how it fits in with the green community, and using all these keywords. The key thing here is infrastructure. What is the basic layout going to look like? That's what's important right now. Um, my, my question is, along with the, my suggestion, is why do you have the roads laid out the way you do? And the reason I'm asking that is because my understanding is that we are going to have the ability to come to Richards and Olive, and instead of everybody going through downtown, they can now turn and go to the campus by going up Richards through the Nishi property into campus, which will greatly improve circulation in downtown. But the way this is laid out, there's a right-hand turn, and then you go way to the far side and back. So my suggestion is that that be a curve, that that be a parkway. And my other suggestion is that coming from the, uh, the bike path there, which is the key bike path through, as soon as you get out of the freeway there, you have a turn into the property. But it, um, it's, a, it's a series then of corners. And it needs to be grade separated from the parkway that I just suggested so that you don't have to deal with the parkway. And then have it, instead of coming out there, have, have a nice bike path that goes into the tunnel that is like the core of the whole thing. And so you have a curved parkway and a nice curved bike path and build everything else off of that because then those are direct paths right through the center of it. I know, I know you have a, a drawing in your mind of, of, I do. What, of what you're talking about. I'll so be glad to draw the, it. That would be great. But I just yeah. wanted to get it out there to the whole group. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you have to come up about this far as I can go. 
I saw this presentation at the city council meeting some months ago, and at that time there were two uh, auto roadways under the railroad tracks with undisclosed uh, access to Olive Drive. And I thought, well, that was interesting, and maybe there would just be no access automobile-wise to Olive Drive, and that would work. The way I see it now, there's conflict between the existing bike path that parallels uh, Olive Drive and automobiles. And also the automobile traffic will c further congest the already congested Richards Boulevard area. And I, I see that as a huge uh, negative that, you know, is not being addressed. I also think, I think generally the campus has a lot of athletic space, particularly along Russell Drive and elsewhere. On one of the slides there's a baseball field that's uh, adjacent to the tracks. I would suggest move all those athletic fields into the Nishi if you want to do that uh, development on the, of the Nishi and put all the campus and you know buildings housing and all that onto the core of the campus screw this development of the Nishi project plan I still stand with plan F which is farmland we're good uh, yeah, my concern is this is being kind of um, uh, staged as a uh, innovation park uh, idea, and and all I see is primarily housing. So number one question is who is the housing for? Uh, how many units are we talking about? That ties into all of the circulation issues. There are enormous circulation problems in this area that have been known for for decades. I don't see a solution to those being presented, really. Um, so I guess the question is, uh, I know the university seems to be very excited about this. I know the university is trying to bring in 5,000 more students, most of them being out of state, out of country. Um, and the university has always been very re resistant to building any housing for students in general, especially for the, the in-state students. So. I mean, is that what's going on here? Is this like supposed to be the, uh, the housing project for the out-of-state and out-of-country students that pay higher uh, uh, tuition? Um, so then this begs the question is why is this being presented in the way it is as, as a uh, pseudo innovation park, which is like an iota of it is innovation park, whereas the majority of it is very high density housing which would demand the most vehicular traffic which is this is the worst location in the entire city to handle vehicular traffic and i'm not hearing the solutions or who is going to pay for those solutions okay do you want to talk a little bit about the numbers again i know you mentioned them once uh, yeah. i think we're roughly we're still studying this so we haven't figured out an actual number but we're looking at about 1200 units um and on how many acres? 1200 on, how many acres? Um, on uh 40 90 about 90 acres um i i would also uh, uh your second question your that was your second question but your first question was housing the idea here is not this is just not student housing this is housing for <coughs> not just students but graduate students families but also a segment of the population that doesn't get housing in Davis which is those new new newly graduates who don't want to live in student housing but can't afford the higher end housing and you the city has a gap uh, in that kind of housing and this this project we're looking at ways to provide that kind of housing for them in, in a way so my point is it's a housing project with some uh, how it should be honestly portrayed. Adrian, why don't you pull up the slide with the... I, I, I wouldn't really. I, I have to differ with you strongly, actually. I, I don't know how you're draw, drawing that, but but I, I would suggest that, um, because other people have, this is only 15 minutes, is that you come to the board, because I'll, I'll be there, and we can have this discussion. I'm happy to have it with you. Um, um, and, and you can see, actually, how many housing and how much office and incubator space there is. And then we can talk about how that fits in, because I, I, I just don't think I can address that right now. And I, I, 
would be happy to talk to you at the board. So. And, and the charts here demonstrate, yeah. you know, roughly the proportions of housing to the R&D space, to the open space that they're looking at in the program at this point. Yeah, and these are all the same for the, all the alternatives right now. That's not to say they might change as we start to understand the market studies and the, the <coughs> and the analysis, but for right now, we're working with this basic program. So the question is, how many housing units? That's just your third question, though. Are, okay, are, well, are, do other people have? Correctly. I think I did. It's no, right no, there. So 1,200 units on 90 acres, and yet uh, Nishi is not 90 acres. So you're including the Solano. Building. It's included, yes. Okay, so how many units on the Nishi? I think we're still working that out, but maybe you could say there's about half, you know, for the sake of Okay, so we're at least 600, 600. on 45. Yeah. That's a big number. No, and I'll, I'll add, too, that, you know, the, uh, I think one of the important elements here at this, at this stage of where we are in the, uh, in concept development is that, you know, we had, excuse me, Rodney, I can't. Mike, I'm no, sorry. Everyone can't can't hear me when, when Mike, you're speaking. My hearing aid battery died. I can't really hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. That help. Yeah. No. I appreciate it. I'll speak up. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, I think one of the key elements to note at this point in our in our uh, evaluation of options here is that you know we have there's there's a range of possibilities, you know, for housing units, the types of housing units. That's the kind the types of jobs, uh, the number of jobs. That's the kind of input. <laughs> We're wanting to seek from the community, from you, and hence some of the some of these boards tonight, and then uh, tomorrow night, more of a focus on the housing and economic development jobs uh, uh, piece of it. So, but reality is too that in order to evaluate uh, the possibilities, we have to start somewhere and have some numbers to to kind of plug in, so that we can start testing things, testing economics, testing traffic. Uh, testing uh, other, other uh, scenarios, uh, but these are all. No, there's nothing here that's that's set in stone in any way. So I'll just want to emphasize that. All right. So I think that's been about 15 minutes. Let's spend some time now with the boards. Staff will be here to answer questions. Um, again, if you want to talk about specifically about frameworks up here in the front, open space and public um, space, as well as mobility in the back. Thank you very much. <laughs>